All right, guys. So I'm gonna talk about you know Berserk, Vagabond, Villain Saga, and Kingdom. These four mangas, specifically seinen mangas, are probably some of the best stories that you ever experience in a fictional medium, right? Of course, we're not talking about shonen today because there's a ton of shonen anime I love, like Hunter x Hunter, JoJo, One Piece. But today we're just going to be talking about these four because these four have a very have um have similar types of stories and also. Um, in terms of like their artwork, just freaking phenomenal, man. Like you look at you, you read Vagabond, and you're like you're looking at a painting, bro. Like every panel could be a painting. Same with Berserk. Same with Kingdom. Like wow, the panels, the the artwork, just like unmatched. But when you really look at these stories in these types of manga, it's honestly astonishing. It's honestly. One of a kind, you know. When you look at Berserk and seeing how Guts developed as a as a as a character, it really allows you to appreciate him more. You know, he was someone that, rightfully so, was super angry and pessimistic and just hated everyone and didn't want to, you know, associate himself with anyone. But when he met new friends, you know, um, and he started to um, meet with new people. Then he started to kind of open up a little bit, and he started to have a more peaceful side of him. You can tell that he still have it. He still has his like. You can still tell like with this character, he has his aggressive past still within him, but he's a little bit more peaceful now. He's like he doesn't like go berserk and rage like crazy nowadays. You know, he's he's kind of. You can just tell like with his personality and his character, he's kind of like matured and grown up from that, right? And now he's developed into like this crazy. Character with uh, uh, guts. It's hard to explain guts's character because it's not as simple as Musashi or you know Thorfinn's character. But with guts's character, it's like it's like a certain um di like mat like majestic character that he 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 embodies, right? And if you read Berserk and you read the entire thing, you just really understand it. Um, but like Berserk is just one of those series where it's like, wow, man, like. It's just potent. It's so potent, guys. Like Berserk is just so. Like when you read Berserk, you're like, there's nothing that really comes close to the level of of masterpiece. Because these series they surpass masterpiece. You know, like people like to label masterpiece as everything, but if I were to like look at Berserk, I would say Berserk is close. Like basically has I think surpassed the realm of masterpiece at this point with what it's done with its story so far. You know, really has surpassed masterpiece. I would say like. The Golden Age arc was a masterpiece, but after, well, especially what Berserk did after the Golden Age arc, with like you know the Conviction arc and the Millennium Falcon arc, and even the F Fantasy right arc, those arcs made Berserk like surpass masterpiece, and it's actually insane when you really look at it. Like these, these this Berserk series is like honestly a journey, and I've read it like three times now, um, in Japanese of course. And every time, bro, I'm still impressed with like the vocabulary Mira knows, bro. Because every time I read Berserk, it's like, yo, it's like you're reading like a hardcore, like dissertation, bro. Like, holy crap, man! Like all those words that you don't know in Japanese, they're like he puts them in there. Of course, you wouldn't know this in English if you're reading this in English. If you read Berserk in English, like you wouldn't, you would, you would have no clue to the level of difficulty it takes for people to read Berserk. Because even for Japanese native speakers, it's very hard to read the Berserk manga. And same with um, Kingdom and Vinland Saga too. I mean, Vinland Saga and Kingdom are a little bit easier, but Berserk is like on another level, bro. Like, holy crap, man! In terms of the vocabulary that's used in Japanese, like every time I read Berserk, like there's a ton of new words that I still don't know. Like, there's a ton of new words I learn and pick up from reading Berserk because it's like it's just that hard, you know. In terms of its vocabulary, it's like very rich vocabulary he's put in his manga, and it's one of a kind, you know. Um, and that's typically why you know even for native Japanese speakers, reading Berserk is actually hard for native Japanese speakers, guys. That's how like it's pretty hard, guys. That's how hard it is. It's actually pretty hard for even a a native Japanese person to read Berserk, right? And certainly a teenager wouldn't be able to read it. Like a, if a teenager were to open Berserk, not only would it be too much for this for this boy, but like the boy wouldn't be able to like understand like some of the stuff. I mean, he'll be able to understand the story, but like. He'll be missing like, a lot of important details with the politic talk and like, you know, everything that goes with it, right? But yeah, guys, Berserk, 
and then you know when, when we transition into vagabond right vagabond when you look when you look at musashi as a character right it, it, it tells you what true strength is. True strength is not about how good you are with fighting. It's about how you keep going in despite of the struggle, right? It's about being able to keep moving forward despite the struggle, right? So what matters in life is not the fact that you give up, but it's the fact that you keep moving forward. And that is what true strength is. When you see Musashi in the farm, you know, he was battling and killing people his entire life as a samurai, winning duels and stuff and at the end of it he was like you know what i'm just gonna like go on a farm and that was its own struggle like that farm arc was like a fight but it was like a different type of fight right because he he wasn't good at farming crops he was like learning but he decided to keep going forward he started to keep per persevering and keep being resilient and that is what made him like that, that that's what taught him to true strength right as true strength it's not about like how good you are with fighting it's about being able to continue to move forward, you know? And that is what Musashi portrays in his character, right? Just especially be knowing how nice he's become, knowing how humble he's become, how peaceful Musashi has become from the entire journey. It's insane. And same with Thorfinn, right? Like Thorfinn from Vinland Saga, you see like he's a hurt boy that, you know, really, you know, he, he, he wanted to take revenge, but, you know, seeing him go from that hurt boy to like a very peaceful Man, like you just look at the look in his face. Like look at the look at the face of Thorfinn when he was like a teenager, like raging, angry, to like when he's an adult. Like you don't even recognize the. It's, you don't even think it's the same person, bro. Like you be he's unrecognizable as an adult, Thorfinn. Like his face is just so like clear and peaceful, and it's it's like yo, what happened, bro? Like Thorfinn for me, like actually has to be one of the best protagonists for me at least because it's like Thorfinn's character journey is always something that resonates with me, right? So even though I might think like maybe Vagabond and Berserk might be better stories overall, I do think that, you know, Thorfinn's character development is probably some of the best in fiction, bro. Some of the best in fiction. And it's the way it's done. Because it's not just about a guy becoming angry and developing into a peaceful person. It's not just that, like, type, like that, that, that type of development. It's also, like, the way it's done. The way it's done is so beautiful. Um, and it's really, like, it's a really a journey. And then we switch over to Kingdom... What's the thing with Kingdom is like, it doesn't focus on the main character, it focuses more on like the entire cast of characters, right? So even though Shin, he's the main character of the story, um, even though like he's like um, a solid protagonist, I don't think like his journey, it's not just about him, it's about everyone else, right? Like, you know, basically, um, ASA, I think that's his name, um, the, the, the king, right? Like he has his own journey, he's trying to make, he's trying to unite China into one, right? So there, there's like multiple like protagonists in a way. But like, I think with Berserk, Vagabond, and Vinland Saga, it just focuses on the protagonist, right? And only one. But with Kingdom, it's like a different type of story. It's like kind of like One Piece in the aspect that like, and it, it, it is going to probably continue to the length of One Piece, right? Um, but Kingdom is like a crazy, like war military manga, like crazy. Like the one of the, it's, it's the best war manga like ever, like ever, dude. Like you just read that and you're like, dude, Pure hype, coalition arc, pure hype, um, invasion Zao arc, pure hype. You just look at it and it's like, yo, especially with like the fight between Hoken and Shin, like in Kingdom, that fight was insane, bro. That fight symbolizes. The, the, what I liked about this fight was Hoken was trying to be a god, right? And I think what Hoken ended up realizing was that you can't, a, a mere human cannot become a god. Right, because a god can only, because a human can only be a human, can only remain a human, and that's why Sheen was able to beat Hoken. Because if Hoken was really like a god that he thought he was, then he wouldn't have, you know, he wouldn't have been killed by Shin. But the fact that Shin was able to defeat him, a mere human, meant that Hoken wasn't a god, right? So this symbolizes that if you're born as a human, you you can only remain as a human. You can you can only remain flawed. And you can never be perfect, right? And that's what I liked about the fight with Hulk and Shin, because I think Hulk and Shin is like basically one of the best fights in all manga. Like, there's a lot of other fights in, in Shonen, like in 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 in, in, in Hunter x Hunter. There's the fight between Netero and Meruem. Like that fight is like gold, but this fight also is on par with that, in my opinion. I just think because that because that was a crazy fight in the manga, bro. You know, and it's funny because Hulk and Shin fought like three to four times before like they finally, you know, had their match, right? 
But like these stories are just, they really tell you deep philosophical things. And I think these books really teach you a lot about life. You know, they, 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 they give you a ton of life lessons. Um, and I really do appreciate these types of mangas because it, it shows you what it really means to develop as a character. You know, what it really... And, you know, when you read this, these stories, it's like, you're going to be spoiled, man. Because you're going to find every other, like, anime, manga is, like, not to the level. It's like, it's like, it's like Berserk and all these other mangas, like, they kind of spoil you. Because once you finish reading all that, then it's like, yo, what's next, you know? Like, you don't really, you know? So, that's the thing, guys. But these stories are really one of a kind. And I really do think that it really is, it's just crazy, guys. Like, the storytelling, everything. I mean... Of course, there's other shonen series that are continuing, like JoJo, um, that are like, but these four seinen, bro, like, these are solid. 